Spiritual Teaching 256 Love Each Other 1. My peace is felt by your spirit, people, when you listen to my word with goodwill. 2. I am the divine gardener who cultivates the gardens in your hearts and waters them with the heavenly waters of my love. A drop of that divine love I pour over so much bitterness in humanity. 3. Now my word polishes you and I give you shape. I am carving the spirit. You, learn to model yourselves and make yourselves beautiful forms fulfilling my law, that your work I will bless it, so that later you carry out in this world the fulfillment of your great mission to guide your brothers along this path of love. 4. I am your master, but do not see me separated from the Father, because I am the Father. There is no difference between the Son and the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit and the Son are one Spirit and that is me. See in my manifestations, through all times, of a single God who is the one who has taught you through multiple and different lessons. A single book with many pages. 5. Sanctify my name with your works and you will find that light in you that will free you from the night of ignorance and sin. 6. Do you remember, people, who you were before you were shaped by my word? Do you remember that before you were capable of many ingratitude that now you would be unable to carry out? You cannot compare your life today with your past life. Before you were the lonely pilgrim who crossed the path without a light to brighten up his existence and light to have hope. Today you are a child of my teaching, in whose source of love you have quenched your thirst and washed your wounds. My love comes to pull out the thorns that you have on your plant and if your cross has nails, I will tear them off too. 7. I am the light of this and of all the worlds, and I want you to dress yourself in that light. My word is healing balm, heal with it, listening to it and putting it into practice. Each word is a drop from the source of life. Why if you carry God in you, are you sick, do you suffer and cry? Examine yourselves and correct what needs to be corrected. Clean everything that needs to be cleaned. I told you, clean the glass both inside and outside. That is, your spirit harmonizes in will and inspiration with your material or human part. I model your inner image, the one that you hide from men, but that you cannot hide from me. Model you your exterior, in such a way that your face is a faithful reflection of the spirit. Then they will exist in your actions, sincerity and truth. That is the reason why men do not trust men, because they present one face to the world, while hiding another. 8. Practice my teaching and make use of your gifts. 9. Have you already examined your wounds? Have you dropped the balm that I have given you? 10. If you doubt the effectiveness of my balm, cure them again. But if you believe, remove the healing from them and you will see how my love heals them and when you look for them, they will have already closed. To others I will grant that they find their health through faith of prayer of thought. Multitudes of spiritual beings will come, who, uniting their power and strength, they will anoint you and you will be cured with their help. 11. It is necessary that my word be kept. Your faith and your merits will save you, because later, when you are healthy, I will send you to the fight to reach the highest point of your life, the love of your fellow men. Don't you want to be a light for others? Wouldn't you like your words to have a true essence? Wouldn't you like to have something to teach those who seek comfort in you? Well, if that pleases you, you can do it because a lot depends on your goodwill and effort to achieve it, everything else I do. 12. The spiritualized says, How beautiful is life! The profane, the materialist says, How bitter! How sad and how gloomy it is life! The man without elevation, stumbles with everything, hurts everything. The one who has risen, does not even notice the roughness of the path. Higher minds, when they are concerned with others, is to praise the virtues of others or to excuse their errors, never to judge or sentence. Low minds judge, slander, publish the faults of others and find pleasure in it. 13. To these who judge and take the cause of their brothers, I ask, does your burden of sins seem very light to you, that you still like to add that of others? If you cannot get rid of your burden, why do you increase it with that of your brothers? Why instead on looking for jewels in your brothers to illuminate you with their light, do you prefer to take the silt, to stain you? 14. The Father's house has many mansions, 
but those who dwell in the higher spiritual regions help men to shed their load or help them carry it, but without judging them or enjoying their miseries. 15. I have seen you murmuring one day and repentant another day. I have seen you denying my communication and then testifying that it is true. I saw you one day slandering and the next day defending the one you slandered. It is good that you rectify your errors, but it would be better if you did not commit evil again so that you do not have to rectify. I saw you one day giving charity to those who did not need it and I saw you deny it to the truly poor. But I do not come to blame you or judge you. I come with the light of my teaching to enlighten you so that you will not sin again. I must also tell you that I have seen to be helpful, noble, charitable and understanding, and that those merits have always been taken into account and noted for me. But understand that there must already be more wheat than tares in your heart. 16. Do not pray without feeling, mechanically moving your lips, pray feeling without speaking. May you have that facility with which in times past you falsely promised and swore in vain to tell the truth. 17. Do not take what is foreign, he who takes what is foreign has to repay with pain and shame. I point to nobody but I want each one to take from my word, the part that corresponds to him. 18. I will not blame or claim you for what you did when you took your steps in the darkness of ignorance, of smallness and materiality. But now that you have complete knowledge of what my law is, if you persist in what is illegal, in what is impure, you will answer me for your actions and I will manifest myself inexorably in your own consciousness. 19. You are all my seed, and the master gathers it. If the tares seed comes among the good seed, I also take it with love between my hands, to transform it into golden wheat. 20. I see in the heart seeds of weeds, mud, crime, hatred, and yet I gather you and love you. To this seed I caress it and purify it, until it shines like wheat in the sun. 21. Do you think that the power of my love is not capable of redeeming you? I will sow you after washing you in my garden, where you will bear new flowers and new fruits. In my divine task is the mission to dignify you. 22. I come to recreate myself among you. I come to converse with your heart. My presence gives you strength so that you can fulfill the mission that I have entrusted to you. 23. And you, don't you feel the pain of humanity? Don't you feel sadness when you see how death is the one that guides this world of sin, instead of being guided by the light of consciousness? 24. You have a very great mission to carry out as disciples of Christ in the third era, since you are one of those who have listened to my word and have learned from me. 25. Know that men, through science, also seek communication with the hereafter. Get up to give testimony of my doctrine, if you don't want them to wake you up. 26. The man of science, who many times has denied my existence, scrutinizes nature everywhere, probes the land, seas, space, and with each discovery that he makes, he speaks of the love with which I have formed all of creation. 27. You have to speak a lot so that my light reaches all your brothers and sisters and they may understand that everything created, from atoms to the largest assemblages of stars, they are destined to produce life, sustenance, well-being and perfection. 28. Make my teaching known in a perfect way so that the ignorant do not attribute imperfections to it. Sow well and the generations that sprout from you will not have to suffer your mistakes, nor will they inherit pain. 29. I want the clean and healthy seed to sprout from you, to carry blessings everywhere. 30. So the path with good examples, do not adulterate my teachings, in this imitate my apostles of the second era that never fell into material worship to teach and explain my doctrine. They cannot be attributed the idolatry into which humanity later fell. His hands never erected altars, nor built palaces for spiritual worship. They brought the teaching of Christ to humanity. They brought health to the sick, hope and comfort to the poor and sad, and like their teacher, they taught the lost way of salvation. 31. The Christian religion that you know in these times is not even a reflection of the doctrine that my apostles practiced and taught. 32. Again I tell you that in those disciples you can find perfect models of humility, love, charity and elevation. 
They sealed the truth from their mouths with blood. 33. Humanity will no longer ask for blood from you to believe your testimony, but it will ask you for truth. 34. My doctrine has always taught man not to be materialistic, but it is far from teaching you contempt for the goods of the earth. I tell you, love the earth, its wonders, its beauties, its joys, with that love with which you must love everything I have created. But be prepared to renounce everything, when necessary, and do not forget that your spirit is a passenger in this life and will have to return to the abode he left, from which you spiritually yearn for your peace. 35. Today you ask me from the depths of your heart. Should you despise material life and forget everything you love on earth to serve me better? To which I answer, whoever believed that I have said this is in error and you have not analyzed my teaching. 36. How do you conceive that I forbid you what material life offers you, if I have created nature for sustenance for my sons? Nothing done by me can be against you to forbid it, but take everything with measure. If I have spoken to you that you should separate yourselves from lust and materialism, I have always referred to low passions, vices, frivolities, or the use of what is superfluous and what is bad. 37. Now that I have been making a broad explanation of my teaching, I must make you understand that everything that you do outside the laws that govern spirit or matter, it is to the detriment of both. 38. Consciousness, intuition, and knowledge are the guides that will show you the right way and avoid stumbling. Those lights are of the spirit, but it is necessary to let them shine. When that clarity is found in each one of you, you will exclaim, Father, your seed of redemption germinated in me and your word finally flourished in my life. 39. I come to inspire you with great thoughts, to move your heart for great works, but in truth I tell you, this doctrine will not remain locked in this people, because spiritualism is universal. The doctrine or revelation of the Holy Spirit is not only for a people, but for all spirits. 40. Like a river that runs with impetus dragging everything, so will the torrent formed by the multitudes of spiritualists, a river that no one will be able to stop because his strength will be invincible, but he who in his path would like to interpose an obstacle will be carried away by the current. 41. Who on earth could have the power to stop the evolution of spirits or the course of God's plans? No one. The only absolute being in power and in justice is your Father and He has ordained that every spirit advance towards perfection. 42. If for moments my divine laws have been disobeyed by men, I make my voice, as if it were the echo of a ringing bell, be heard even by the dead to spiritual life. 43. The voice of this people will also resound in the hearts with the echo of a bell that awakens and invites you to pray and meditate. But it is necessary that you clothe yourselves with humility and that your heart be filled with charity so that your works shine as true examples among humanity. 44. Stop loving yourself so that you can start loving others, not to seek honors for your name and worry only that your works are clean and you will pass to immortality. I tell you in truth that he who sows with humility will leave an imperishable mark of his passage through the world. On the other hand, whoever works in my work looking for the praise and glory of the world, that one will contemplate that their work soon will be erased and that his name did not even become known by the third generation after him. 45. I have entrusted you with a beautiful mission, but at the same time very delicate, but not for that reason it is superior to your strength, because each one is assigned a small part to play. 46. The redemption of humanity will not be done by a single man, not even a people. It will be I, who gave my blood representing with her my love, who makes men rise up in this time, seeking the path that Christ taught. 47. Watch and pray always, because it is the time when darkness and confusion are unleashed, when legions of darkness surrounds and disturbs men. 48. Have the absolute understanding that my communication with you has been to heal your spirit, to free it, to regenerate it and raise it towards the light, to reveal great knowledge and clarify mysteries not understood by men and also to discover in you what has been hidden from you. 49. Take my word full of essence and eternal life. Feel my strength in you. Fear not. I know everything. Even the last of your sorrows is present before me. 
50. My justice takes your cause. I wipe your tears. I offer you a staff so that you lean on it in life and I place my kiss on your forehead so that you feel anointed and loved by me. 51. Do not fear the small pebbles on the road. Learn to pass over them without hurting yourself, which is the same as living elevated above the miseries of human life. 52. Pray for the nations, with such faith and charity that your influence be felt by your brothers and you feel that my mantle of love covers you all. 53. In each time that I have granted you for the evolution of your spirit, you have been acquiring more light. 54. That light is what illuminates your intelligence and your feelings. 55. Before you arrived on Earth, I already knew your trajectory and inclinations, and to help you in your journey, I put on your path a heart that, with its love for you, will illuminate the path. The heart was the same in man as in woman. This is how I wanted to help you, so that you become like a staff of faith, of moral strength and charity for those in need. 56. You are afraid to open your lips to speak openly of my coming, and within you a struggle is taking place in him, longing to do charity and the fear of being rejected. Then you prefer to hide with your gifts and missions that you have received from the Master, but think, toddlers, that hiding the gifts you possess is equivalent to denying myself and denying yourself your evolution. 57. Believe that if this people were united and had risen full of faith and courage to give the good news, in word and with works, the knowledge that I am communicating with men would have reached the end of the earth. 58. If you still feel weak, I say eat and drink because I do not want to contemplate hunger or thirst among you. 59. Do my will and the reward will soon come when you feel my love within you, when you sense the peace of the hereafter, like a door that invites you to pass and contemplate my face. 60. I am teaching all of you to lift your spirit in prayer. Some already know how to recreate themselves with this grace. Others, they have not yet succeeded, because their past impressions have left a deep imprint on their mind, because they have not forgotten religious customs and traditions, but all fight for the purification of their practices, for regeneration and for the spiritual elevation. 61. Blessed are those who have believed in my presence through the understanding of man, for they will penetrate with a firm step in the time of communication from spirit to spirit. 62. You have approached me to receive the comfort and warmth that you need as a truce in your life, since this is like an anvil that forges spirits with great trials. But your confidence in your destiny is great and you know that from this crucible you will come out clean for the fight. 63. Day after day your spiritual prayer reaches my spirit, whose language does not know your matter because they are not words spoken by your lips and are not ideas formulated by your mind. The prayer of the Spirit is so profound, which is beyond human powers and senses. 64. In this prayer the Spirit reaches the regions of light and peace where high spirits dwell, and there it becomes saturated from that essence. He returns to his passing body to transmit strength to him. 65. This is the time when man releases his Spirit, when chains that for a long time tied him are broken and true peace penetrates your heart. 66. Be alert so that you do not fight those like you who rise up carrying out missions entrusted by my divinity, so that you can recognize the true prophets and the false ones, and confirm the works of some and destroy the works of others. Because this is the time when all forces have risen to fight. There is good fighting against evil, light against darkness, knowledge against ignorance, peace against war. 67. You are awakening to the Holy Spirit and you are awakening the sleeper to contemplate the light that blots out borders and limits, to form with all beings a single family united by love. 68. The word that I have made vibrate through the spokesperson will resound everywhere when the time comes. Listen to me with attention as in recent years, because it will not be the last lesson of 1950 that will show you the route or enclose all the mandates. But in all my lessons you will have everything you need to know and do. These three years have been an unceasing revelation to you. 69. I want all my disciples and my toddlers to listen to me the last day to receive them on behalf of humanity. My arms will open, but I don't want it to be on a cross like in that second era. 
I want to hug you in an embrace of love after this communication of the divine spirit through man is closed. 70. The time has come for the voice of the ringing bell to be heard by even those dead to the life of the spirit. 71. None of those I have chosen at this time is puffed up believing himself superior to the others because of his spiritual gifts, because you still cannot compare yourselves with John, the one of whom I said that being the greatest among the prophets, was less than the smallest in the kingdom of heaven. 72. Live for the Father by loving his children who are your brothers and you will achieve immortality. If you fall into selfishness and you lock yourself in your own love, the seed that you leave and your memory will hardly last. 73. Be meek and humble of heart and you will always be full of my grace. My peace be with you.